Hey, what's going on everybody? It's the CD guy, Johnny Z here. Thank you so much for tuning back into the channel, and today I'll be reviewing the new Rolling Stones studio album, Hackney Diamonds. First off, we have just some fast album facts here. This is the 26th American studio album by the British rock legends, the Rolling Stones, released today on October 20th, 2023 through Polydor Records. It's the first album of original Stones material since A Bigger Bang from 2005, and the first since the death of longtime drummer Charlie Watts in 2021. Speaking of Charlie Watts here, as for the personnel on this record, it does feature some of the final studio recordings of Charlie Watts on the drums, and also, of course, you have Mick Jagger, Keith Richards, Ronnie Wood, and the current drummer of the band, uh, Steve Jordan here, that plays drums for the rest of the record. Record. It's produced by Andrew Watt and features a wide list of collaborations here of uh, notable guest musicians such as Paul McCartney, uh, Elton John, Lady Gaga, Stevie Wonder, and more. Let's get into the record here with John's five, my top five favorite songs from this album. Coming in at number one, I'm going to go with Angry. It was the lead single, and also it's the album opener here for Hackney Diamonds. Sounds like classic Rolling Stones in my opinion. A perfect way to start off this record. High octane, high energy, very vibrant sound to it with a killer riff as well on top of those recognizable Mick Jagger vocals. So in my opinion, this is a song that in its sound and its approach would not sound out of place on a classic record like Tattoo You. So I thought that was very cool. I love the solo here too, and you know, in general, one of the more accessible songs on the record so definitely makes sense as to why it was you know the lead single here for this album but also i think it's one of the strongest rockers on this album as well so awesome stuff here in my opinion with angry hands down my favorite song from this record a modern day stones classic for number two i'm gonna go with bite my head off really cool collaboration here with paul mccartney this song is fast paced it's a rocking track with aggressive vocals by Mick Jagger, and just think for a second about the star power here alone on this track you have keith richards paul mccartney and Mick Jagger here all on one song together that's pretty surreal in the year 2023 because i mean imagine what rock music would look like today if not for those three guys it's it's pretty crazy to think but it's a great collab here with mccartney and what's probably the heaviest song on the record as far as i'm concerned love the vibe of this track which really does feel like a jam session between the stones and mccartney all the way down to mick saying come on paul let's hear some bass you know great kind of a fun feel-good vibe to this track in my opinion i do love the way the bass is you know turned up in the mix here so i found that to be quite enjoyable quite enjoyable love the sound here Love this track. I think it's a lot of fun and definitely my second favorite from this album. Number three, I'm going to go with Sweet Sounds of Heaven. Great collaboration here featuring Stevie Wonder on piano and Lady Gaga on backing vocals. This track is a great throwback to some of the Stones' classic rock mixed with soul and gospel type songs. And you know, to be honest though, I cringed at first when I first heard that Lady Gaga was going to be collaborating with the Stones on this record just because I got flashbacks to Lady Gaga's collaboration with Metallica on Moth into Flame Live at the Grammys. And ugh, I, I just got bad, bad flashbacks to that. But in hindsight, I definitely take it back. I think her voice harmonizes really well with Mick Jagger and I think it's a harmless collaboration if nothing else but the Stones definitely dealing out the star power here on this track seven minutes long very atmospheric as well and could absolutely pass as old school Rolling Stones for number four we have Live by the Sword really cool track here featuring Elton John as well as some of the final recordings by Charlie Watts and also a former member of the band Bill Wyman on the bass which I thought was interesting and this song is kind of heavy in its own way you know I think Mick Jagger does a fantastic job of accentuating certain words in its delivery to make this song a lot more attitudinal and does that for a number of tracks on this record but I think most most prominently here on this one, or at least most profoundly as far as I'm concerned, and also love the guitar solo here by Keith Richards, definitely in my opinion his best on the record. And finally, rounding out John's five, we have Depending on You, a sombering third track here on the record that at least has changed the vibe from the first two tracks here, uh, that being Angry and Get Close. Very ballad track, super mainstream accessible, but there are some fantastic lyrics here and great delivery by Mick Jagger that make it a standout for me, so I definitely wanted to include it here in my top five, rounding out John's five here with Depending on You, and you know, some other noteworthy track worth talking about here include Close to You, really bluesy track featuring Elton John, a uh, little saxophone solo there as well. You have Whole Wide World, which has some of my favorite lyrics on the record, very attitudinal track as well. And then of course you have Tell Me Straight, your obligatory Keith Richards on lead vocals track. And it closes things out with Rolling Stone Blues, a uh, great Muddy Waters cover to finish off this record. All in all, I'm going to give Hackney Diamonds by the Rolling Stones 8.5 out of 10 stars. The Stones made a statement with this album, turning back the clock and giving us their best studio effort in decades as far as I'm concerned. Lots of tracks on here that wouldn't sound out of place on a number of classic Rolling Stones records, and they were still able to capture that vibrant and energetic energy and sound in the studio here, which just goes to show, like it says in the thumbnail of this video, you're never too old to rock. So I think this is a fun, mostly feel-good record here with some great upbeat rockers, some cool ballads as well, got some great co uh, collaborations here. So definitely a candidate, in my opinion, for Rock Album of the Year, and right now it's pretty close between this record and But Here We Are by the Foo Fighters. So just to let you guys know, so I will be doing a number of year-end videos 
videos this year, I'll be breaking, you know, uh, breaking albums and rankings up into hard rock and metal and then a whole bunch of subgenres as well, just to cover as many bands as possible because there were a lot of great releases this year. But, you know, when it comes to my hard rock ranking, it's going to come down to the Stones or the Foo Fighters, but right now the Stones are making a very good case for the album of the year. So for me, I'm going to keep listening, obviously, and there's a chance that it can go even higher than an 8.5 out of 10. But upon my first few listens, I stayed up to the release date last night and um, I've been listening ever since. And, you know, one more thing I want to talk about real quick, and I mentioned this briefly when I was covering the two singles that were released. I did individual single reviews for Angry and Sweet Sounds of Heaven. I'll leave those linked down below. But one thing I was talking about, and I touched base briefly in those videos, was what's really cool about this is that I get to actually experience, you know, going to the record store and buying a Rolling Stones record for the first time of, you know, original new material, which is really, really cool to me. You know, I never thought I would have that opportunity. And, you know, considering these bands are all older now, you never know when they're going to call it quits. You know, you can't take those for granted. So I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to go to the record store and experience buying a brand new Stones record for the first time. That's very exciting to me. You know, think about it like this. I can't go to the, stu go, go to the record store and buy a new Beatles studio album anymore, but I can still do that with the Stones, and that's not something to be taken for granted. So I think that's really cool, and I can't wait to go and pick up my copy. I've been listening on Spotify since it dropped last night, but definitely cannot wait to have a physical copy of Hackney Diamonds in my collection. I'll be hitting the record stores today and hopefully going to find a copy. So very excited for that. And again, just something that's really cool to experience for the first time. And, you know, one of those things that as these bands get older, you really cannot take for granted. So it's great that the Stones are still making new music and still operating at this level. So that wraps up my review of the new Rolling Stones record, Hacking Diamonds. If you enjoyed this video or if you agree with me, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel down below. We are just 10 subscribers away from getting to 1.9 thousand subs here on YouTube. So if you have not subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do so. It's greatly appreciated. Also, be sure to turn on the bell for notifications so you never miss a new upload. Lots of cool stuff coming towards the end of the year this year, right, for the month of October and November. And then, of course, my year-end stuff in December. So you definitely want to stay tuned for that. And also, you know, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. What are your thoughts on the new album by The Stones? Do you enjoy it? Do you think it sounds like old school Rolling Stones? And be sure to vote in the community tab. We've got a poll going for your thoughts on the new album, Hackney Diamonds, here. So please let me know all your thoughts there and in the community tab as well. I definitely want to hear from you and your opinions. And until next time, it's the CD guy, Johnny Z, signing off. Take care, everybody.